Oh yes, little Mortimer, you'll like this. You're pretty birdie, pretty birdie. Yes, let's be nice. Oh, let's see now. Oh, this will be simple. Let's just take a look at the instructions here. To assemble, four screws hold top to bottom. City Distribution. This is Lori. May I help you? <laughs> a dissatisfied customer is a time bomb waiting to go off. A time bomb that can damage your business. Maybe more than you realize. Did you know that a satisfied customer will tell an average of three people what a good company you are? But that a dissatisfied customer will tell an average of 11 people how unhappy he is with your company? And who knows how many customers will never call or call back because of those negative comments. That's why customer service is often defined as the business of keeping the business. It's also a big competitive advantage in today's world. And to make it work for you, all you need is a phone and an understanding of what the service customer really wants. Who is this person on the other end of the line when you pick up a customer service call? Don't be too quick to judge, because the way the customer acts is not always the way they feel, and what they say is not always what they mean. For instance, is abusive behavior really a plea, I want you to understand that I have a problem? I was only seven, but I still remember the ad. High fashion doll, it said. Lifelike features. Well, this is what came in the mail. A cheap cardboard cutout. Hardly something to set the little girls of Lucius Avenue abuzz with envy. So, what does this have to do with my business today? Our order today, it came in three pallets short. Now look, I need those pallets, and I need them today. Sometimes if there's a problem, I, I may overreact. You know, get a little too upset. But it's all the rip-offs over the years, all the people trying to take advantage of you. It all comes rushing back. Then let me talk to someone who can help me, someone with authority. What is your name? It's like a stress syndrome with flashbacks. You know, it's those cutouts all over again and tourist traps, and stale hot dogs at the ballpark. It's all of it. Let me tell you something. I've got a lawyer standing right here who would love to sit in on this conversation. I know it's not right, and I really don't mean to take it out on the person, but it happens. The crazy thing is, all I really want is someone just to take care of my problem. Anger is a tool we use even when we're not angry. So here's another question to ask yourself. Is the customer really angry or just defensive? I don't like confrontation. I hate confrontation. I try to avoid eye contact when I look in the bathroom mirror in the morning. But everyone has to call someone about a problem sometime. And I know I'm gonna get a hard time. So I figure, attack first. Show them that they, if they wanna fight, They'll get a fight. Make them regret the day they tangled with Louis B. Price. This is Louis B. Price, and I've got a problem. You're here to help? What, is this some kind of trick? Once I call, I never let my guard down. 
I'm a coiled spring of primal fury. I'm really upset. I want answers, and I want them now. You'll help me any way you can? Okay, so I'm, I'm not a killer. But they don't have to know that. Before I go on, I just want to say there's no excuse for what happened to me. Whatever it is, you'll take care of it? Okay, then. Thanks. So you can imagine how relieved I am if they're pleasant to me. It's almost like that's my main problem taken care of. <laughs> In fact, this one time, I got this person on the line. She was so nice that I thanked her and hung up without even... Well, you don't want to hear that. Another thing to keep in mind is that customers are interested in their problems, not your problems. So the wrong attitude can light the fuse of even a calm customer. I always try to give a person the benefit of the doubt. If we have a problem, I assume the supplier will take care of it because he values us as a customer. But some of these places, they just set you off. Listen, that's not my responsibility. Huh, you must be mistaken. I don't understand how that could happen. I wish you would have told me that in the first place. Look, I don't make the rules. I could not believe this guy. I mean, if I call you, I don't expect that my problem is going to be the most important thing you have to deal with that day. But I sure want you to make me feel like it is. If you do that, then we can solve anything. You can solve almost anything in customer service when you understand how customers think and you're sensitive to how they feel. So, listen between the lines. Remember, what we call customer service today used to be called the complaint department, a place with all the charm and understanding of the Salem witch trials. Many of us still carry that emotional baggage around. Today, of course, it's different. We understand that a customer with a problem is only looking for two things, someone willing to listen and someone willing to help. So if you can show him that you're on his side right away, you can usually defuse even the most stressful situation. And those are the ones you're really worried about because the rest are opportunities. Let's see how to capitalize on them. The first few moments of an incoming call are critical. Not only do you have to identify yourself and your company, but you have to show the customer that you're eager to help. A calm, pleasant voice and a simple response like, may I help you, are often enough. Then, just listen, very carefully. As we discussed, it's the most important part of a successful call. It's also good psychology to let customers tell their stories, if possible, from beginning to end without interruption except for an occasional listening response such as yes or I see or of course. Now let's see how all this works in a real situation. Lake City Distribution, this is Laurie. May I help you? Yes, uh, I want a scale. You know, uh, a bathroom scale. As part of a contest. While you're listening, it's important to try and visualize the problem. See through the customer's eyes. Put yourself in the customer's place. I picked it up at your reception desk and noticed the package was a little crushed on one side. Not too bad, though. It, it didn't really bother me. Well, anyway, I unpacked the thing at home and noticed a little dimple down on the bottom corner, but I still don't think much of it. Then the phone rings. I don't really test the thing until the next morning. Hello. So I'm in the bathroom, and I get on this scale. It goes from zero to 500 in about a second. I get off and get on again. Bam, 500 pounds. I adjust it and try again. 500 pounds. Now, either I ate way too much for dinner or this scale is just not working. After you visualize the problem, go over it again with the customer in your own words. Okay, sir, let me see if I understand this correctly. You won one of our scales in a contest, but when you picked it up, the box looked damaged. That's right. And when you opened the box at home, the scale looked damaged. Uh, yes, down by the bottom corner. And it would only register 500 pounds. And above. 
then apologize for any company errors, delivery problems, service or billing problems, inconsiderate employees, or in this case, damaged goods. Sir, I'm sorry you received a damaged scale and I apologize for the inconvenience. Just bring it back and ask for me. We'll replace it. Quick, easy, friendly. Most surface problems are like that, but not all, of course. With some problems, you have to dig a little deeper. But remember, in teleservice, you have to think about the problem, not the solution. Because once you understand the problem, the right solution is usually evident. How do you get the information you need? Use fact-finding questions. These are open-ended questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Questions that require a more complete answer than a yes or a no. Besides, questions allow you to control the conversation while showing the customer that you're interested. But take good notes while the customer is explaining his problem because you don't want to ask an irate customer to repeat himself. Okay, so you showed the customer you're on his side. You listened to his problem. You defined his problem with good fact-finding questions. And you took good notes throughout the whole process. Now it's decision time. What do you do about the problem? Well, basically you have three choices. Solve the problem yourself, refer the call to someone more qualified while the customer stays on the line, or arrange to have someone investigate the problem and call the customer back. Of course, solving the problem quickly and neatly is always the best, but not always possible. The customer's complaint may be too technical or beyond your authority. If that's the case, gather as much information as you can through fact-finding questions, then ask someone for help. But be careful. Referring a problem while the customer stays on the line often requires you to risk one of the most potentially explosive actions in all of customer service, putting the customer on hold. If you have to do it, just remember, there's a right way and a wrong way. Acme Novelty, please hold. For whom are you holding? Hungry? <laughs> One moment, please. Please hold. Please hold. Please hold. Just a minute, let me check. Mm -hmm. Would you please hold? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, the words please hold are like sticks of dynamite that can blow up in your face unless you handle them with care. Here's how. Ask the customer for permission to be put on hold. If he says no, fine, arrange a call back. Don't ignore customers on hold for long periods of time. Check back with them every 60 seconds or so. And finally, thank the customer for waiting. That's please hold the painless way. Still, if you can't solve the problem yourself, your third option, arranging a callback, is often best for both your company and your customer because it allows you to prepare a complete answer while the customer cools off. Good pre-call planning is the key to a successful callback. Your goal is to solve the problem first, then call the customer back. The first step, defining the problem. Jerry, yeah, how you doing? Listen, I got a call from a customer yesterday. He received an order of swivel bar stools instead of swivel office chairs. <laughs> yeah, I know, but he's not laughing. Well, it messed up his whole day. Plus, the delivery people gave his office manager a hard time. Any idea what happened? Okay, you check it out on your end and I'll see what I can look up over here and I'll call you back. Once you've defined the problem, try to find out exactly what went wrong. Talk to people, check customer records, cross-check customer complaints. Bingo. 
When you find the problem, list all possible solutions and choose the best one. Jerry, let me run this past you before I call this guy back. Okay, we could just swap the bar stools between him and the lodge. Or we could ship them both new orders, pick up the stuff that's there, figure out what to do with it later. Yeah, that's probably best. What do you think about offering him an additional discount for the inconvenience? Okay, then we won't do that. I'll call him right back. Then organize your thoughts. Actually write down the important points so you're sure to give the customer a complete answer. Yes. Mr. Joseph. Yes. I'm Ed Malone, manager at Lake City Distribution. I was told that you called yesterday. I want to let you know that we're going to take care of this problem this afternoon. The first minute of a callback can be tense and tricky, but this was handled very well. The manager used that critical minute to build customer confidence through the pleasant tone of his voice. He acknowledged the customer's phone call, not the problem. And right away, he assured the customer that the problem was solved without actually mentioning the problem. Now, the customer knows there won't be a confrontation, so he's more open to a solution. At this point, the manager can begin a more detailed discussion by restating the problem. Watch how he gets customer agreement on the accuracy of the details. Mr. Joseph, I just want to make sure I have the facts right. You ordered swivel office chairs, and we sent you swivel bar stools by mistake. Yes. Your office manager accepted the order only because the delivery people were so upsetting. Yes. No argument about the facts. So it's time to present the solution. Again, get agreement on each point, although in this case there's really only one point. And be very definite about what you'll do and when you'll do it. Mr. Joseph, we'll deliver four swivel office chairs to your office by mid-afternoon today and remove the bar <laughs> Would that be satisfactory? Yes. Mr. Joseph, I apologize for any inconvenience this has caused you. We appreciate your call. Good service is important to us. And I'm going to follow up with the delivery company. And now, before closing the call, make sure that you have all the facts you need to follow through on the arrangements you made with the customer. Write them accurately and legibly on the proper form. Let the customer know you're happy the problem has been resolved. And always let the customer hang up first. These are important techniques for everyone in your business to know because in a small business everyone may be a customer service rep, even the boss. We had a call yesterday, a new customer. You've heard of the movie 12 Angry Men? Well this guy was all 12 of them. I took the call myself. It turned out his first order was short some items, so we shipped them overnight air at our expense. That's all he wanted. In fact, during the conversation, he asked to see a sales rep about another service we offer. I told him Mark would stop by today. <laughs> that was a surprise. But that's teleservice. When you use respect and understanding to help customers solve problems, yesterday's complaint becomes today's opportunity. Remember, adding new accounts helps your company grow. But keeping customers keeps your company in business. That's where good teleservice can be a big help. It works for us. Say, would you excuse me? I've got to try and catch Mark. Opportunity knocks. <laughs>